Hey, this is K Douglas, aka Special K, nationally syndicated radio personality and comedian. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Special K913, on Facebook the same way, Special K913, K Douglas comedian, also on Facebook fan page. And uh, yeah, you're uh, rocking with Michelle C, Candy Kisses TV. It's the Jill of All Trades, Michelle C, aka DJ Make a Move. She cute. Your host of Candy Kids TV, everywhere you need to be. <laughs> and if you don't know by now, it's not your typical interview, y'all. Candy Kisses, blown away. Candy Kisses, TV for tomorrow today. Throw that all the on that bitch, have you sound like Teddy Pine. Yo, what's up? It's bro, man from the fifth floor in the ATL, chilling with Candy Kisses TV. What's up, y'all? You're watching Candy Kisses TV with my whole girl, Michelle. Hello there. Have you asked yourself what you're missing? I have. It's Candy Kisses TV. <laughs> Michelle C, a.k.a. DJ Make a Move, the Jill of all trades, and I am back with another banger. Now, you know what we do each and every time around the same time. I got to threaten y'all a little bit. Subscribe now. I'm going to tell you, mama. Act like she done raised you right. Now, we finna bring you another dope talent like I always do. This gentleman has been rocking the stage for ages. He's been in the radio industry for quite some time, but he's been cracking you up for longer than that. Give it up for Mr. Special K. Yo, 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 yo. Please calm down, everybody. Everybody, please. Relax. Please let them know calm how down. they can follow you. Not that serious. What's going on? Let them know how they can follow you real quick so they can get on your business real quick. Special K913 on that Instagram and also my Facebook fan page. Uh, actually, I got two of them K Douglas Comedy and Special K913 on Facebook. Yeah, follow your boy, man. All right, so we finna get all in your business just a little bit. So my first question, I always ask people like in the industry, what drove you to be in the industry? Because a lot of times, like when you start, you know, on your journey in, in at a high school or whatever, you be like, oh, you know, I might be a doctor, I might be a fireman or whatever. Like what made you say, I ain't doing none of that? <laughs> no, it was, that was, well, that definitely wasn't my journey because my, uh, you know, my dream in high school was to like my dream job. Once I became, you know, I said, when I, when I become an adult, my dream job was to work for the airline and be that dude out on the, out on the, out on the ramp with the orange sticks doing like this, like okay. waving the planes in. That was, I, I thought as a kid, I thought that was the coolest job you could ever have in life. And I said, if I could ever just be blessed to be that dude, I don't, I, to this day, I don't know what they call. I just know they work on the ramp and they do this with the sticks, with the orange sticks. And I know it's my mom. Flight attendant, so I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I ain't talking about no damn flight attendant. I'm talking about the man I know. With the sticks who do right. this right here. That's what I wanted to do. I guess my, they, and I promise you, Michelle, I would do that job to this. If, if I could get that job right now, I would do that job today. You can. Who's, who's stopping you? Uh, Delta don't hire people with criminal records, but that's another story for another okay. show. We but anyway, <laughs> I think I think what you wanted to know is how did I get into comedy, right? Correct. How did I end up being? How did I end up being the the premier uh, writer and one of the producers of the of the funniest and and longest running morning show in the country? How did I get here? How did I get to the stand up stages? Well, it all started. Um, I used to be a male stripper, and you got to say male stripper. I don't know why that don't make sense. Obviously, I'm a male, and right. I was a stripper. Okay. But that's what they call them, male strippers. Think Magic Mike, that whole thing, but the black version. Okay. That's how I started off getting on stage. My first time on stage, that's what I was doing, okay? And I did that in, well, I don't want to, I don't really want to age myself, but I did that after I was in the military first. I got out of the military, I got out of the Air Force, and I started stripping the last year I was in the Air Force, right? And uh, it was kind of like a side hustle. 
that I kind of stumbled upon by mistake. That's, so hustle. That's some money, money. I, I used to be a luscious little show. That's some real money. Well, it started off as a as a gag because I, me and some of my buddies from the Air Force, we were um, at a club and they had a, uh, this is going to sound so cheesy. They had a sexy man contest, right? Okay. <laughs> and uh, we were in Miami. The club was called Strawberries. And they had a sexy man contest every Wednesday night. And dudes would get up there and you had to take off your shirt and just dance. And whoever the ladies liked the best. And you did, you could do whatever kind of dance you wanted to do. But you had to okay. take your shirt off. Mm-hmm. And um, whoever the ladies liked the most, you win 150 bucks. And oh. so, you know, my, my buddies was like gassing me up. They're like, bro, you can dance, man. You know, I, I've been working out a little bit. Got in. They was like, man, get up there, man. You can dance, man. Get up there and win that money, right? Right. So, you know, just back in the day when I was drinking a little bit. So I was dressed up. I jumped up there. Got, I won the money. Okay. I, I kind of caught a bug. And I went back like two, three more weeks in a row. And I kept winning. Like, I became a fan favorite. Like, every time I come up there, I would win the money. Okay. And so some dudes who was who who danced there on a regular basis, they had a, a mirror view there. They were like, mm-hmm. "Yo, you know, we don't know who you are, bro, but like, you need you need to join our group, man, because like you, you're killing it." Yeah. And, um, I'm like, "Well, shit, I don't do nothing else at night. I work in the daytime." So I, I had never thought about it. And then okay. they told me, you know, hey man, we you know we make good money and we got a lot of you know friends benefits. You need to do right. this. So I did it, and I, I ended up doing it for ten years. Okay. Fast forward, move to move back home to Atlanta, and um, uh, did a bunch of other stuff okay. for several years, and uh, I was still dancing, and that's when I met some more. Okay, the more was the MC for our group. Uh, our group was called Prime Time. It was it was the premier male male review in in. What was in your stage name? Uh, well, it, it was special. Okay, it started oh, okay. off. I was the hitman. Okay, it started off. I was the hitman, and then it, it. I don't know why or when it changed, but it just somehow it became special. I don't know. I thought it was dumb. But okay, it stuck. And uh, some more had just started really blowing up doing her, you know, doing stand up, mm-hmm. and so she would MC. Sometimes Monique would fill in for her when she was on the road. That's when I met Monique, and then we had a couple other female uh, MCs, right? Okay. And what happened was when some more really kind of hit after Def Jam in 96, I think it was, she started getting, like, crazy requests to go on the road. Mm. And so uh, we uh, – and then Monique was, you know, same thing. Somehow or another, I ended up hosting a couple of the shows, right, because of the, of the group of dancers I had kind of had the gift of gab. So I ended up hosting a couple of the shows, kind of like the whole Magic Mike thing, like Magic McConaughey mm-hmm. or, 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 or whoever was. And I discovered that I was pretty fun. I knew I was. I already knew I was funny. Yeah, I knew I was witty. And when I started hosting the shows, I would be like roasting the ladies. I would be just, you know, I'd just be acting stupid, just doing silly right. shit. And um, yeah, and 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 I started kind of catching that little bug. I started liking having that mic in my hand and. And and I just I don't know I just started liking it. Some more came and checked me out a couple of times. She was like, "Yo," she was like, "Dude, you're really funny." She was like, "You need to be doing stand up." And I'm like, "Nah, I don't know about it." She said, "Yes, you need to be doing stand up." She's like, "I tell you what," she said, "Go do some open mics or whatever, you know, develop, just get some material, or whatever, and just and go on the road with me. I take you on the road with me, and you know, you'll be my opener." Okay. And that's how I started doing stand up. I was some more's opener, so I started out. We was doing sold out club because she was like scorching hot at the time. Right. And, um, you know, so we was, you know, doing sold out comedy clubs and little theaters and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that was my introduction to the um, to the stand up comedy world. So you never like I mean, if you can get up there and strip, that means you don't have no nervousness in your body at all. No, nah, actually. Uh, yeah, well. I put it like this. It took a while, like, cause then somebody what happened what started happening was when I would go do stand up in mm-hmm. some of the places that we used to strip at, a lot of the ladies in the crowd would be like, Yo, what are you doing? You like you doing comedy? You know, take it off, take it off of that. I had to do that for about a year. But like, I'm saying just the, the courage to get on the stuff, like whether it's comedy or anything, to get on anybody's stage, like you ain't had no nervousness. 
comedy is way more there's what there's much more nervousness with doing stand up than there ever was doing stripping. Cause when you're stripping, I mean you're just giving it to them. Like, you know, okay. you just you 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 just kind of giving it to them. Like you're not talking, you're just giving it to them. That's you just want to give out some personality, you wanna you wanna give some 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 aggression, you you know, you wanna do your thing, but the nervousness really wasn't there for stripping. You just gotta be you gotta have that aspect of your personality that okay. you know. I don't know what the word is, but you got to just be kind of that guy to be able to do that, to right. be on a stage in front of how many hundreds of women with a G string on. Yeah, that takes a little bit of. That's what I'm shy. saying. <laughs> yeah, you can't be shy because you're literally a butt naked. Like, <laughs> so yeah, you can't be shy. That's mm -hmm. for sure. But so, uh, okay, well, then if you said that the comedy is a little bit more nervousness, like, what was your first time on stage like doing comedy? Like, were you like, you couldn't be that nervous, but I know you had some kind of element of nervousness. Well, um, honestly, Michelle, I don't remember my very first. Oh, yes, I do. I do remember my very first time. I remember my very first time I was in L.A. And um, I went to the Comedy Act Theater and mm -hmm. I went up under an alias name because I wasn't sure how I was going to do. I had a okay. bunch of material written out. I, I, I said, I'm going to try it. And this was actually year, a couple of years before. I, this was a year before I started stripping. Oh, okay. And I, I wanted to try my hand at it because I was trying to be an actor and all that. So I was in, I was in L.A. on some a mission. And uh, I said, well, let me, let, me, let me go to this comedy club and try to, try to do comedy. And I saw Chris Tucker out there. And I had known him from, you know, back in Decatur from high school. Okay. And uh, he was like, yo, man, I ain't know he's out here. He's, man, get up there, kill it, man. Just go do your thing. And he didn't know that it was, I had never done it before. Because okay. he, he had been in L.A. for a minute. And I went out there and I, I said what I said my first joke, which was, man, uh, I love black women. There's some fine black women out here. I really love black women. But I sure wouldn't mind fucking some white ones. Boy. <laughs> that was my joke. Okay. And the boos were so loud and so <laughs> ferocious and so crushing. That, <laughs> ferocious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was so crushing. Like the level of boos. What I didn't realize is that the Comedy Act Theater at the time was the hottest place in LA. Okay. And you had Paul Mooney coming through there. You had Ed Murphy coming through there. You had Damon Wayans coming through there. Kenan. Like you had, you had hitters coming. And I can't believe with that bullshit. And yeah, it was it was pretty, it was it was bad, and it was a long time before I got back on stage again after that humiliation. But I'm surprised though, and I'm from LA, and like I mean, yeah, it's the black people out there, but it's so many mixed races and mixed couples in LA. Like, yeah, but you got, but, but no, man, but I had no, I had no punchline, I had no setup, I had no. Uh, I just went. That's what I just told you. Oh, exactly what I said. That ain't no joke. No, but that was just, I, I thought you went into something else. That was it? That was I, it? I didn't, yeah, that's what the crowd was saying. Nigga, that was it. <laughs> they, was like, what? they was like, what was that? They was like, that was a joke. Like, what the hell? Like, what the, like, what was that? That was, that was just, you just said something. You, You're right. So, you know, yeah, so it was, it was pretty bad. But it got better. It got okay. better. Obviously, it got better. Yeah, cause uh, I was like I, I just tippy toed my little butt in there, and it's it's cool. I I think I've been around comedy so long that my skin is thick, so no matter what happens, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have you gotta have thick skin, man, and and you gotta be able to, you know, you gotta be willing to fall on your face, like you yeah. gotta be willing to take them L's, like even at this stage in the game, and it's been twenty. Um, Jesus, 24, 23, 24 years, I think. Mm -hmm. Even at this stage in the game, you got to be willing to take L's. You got to be willing to, like right now, because of the pandemic and everything, everybody was off stage for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just now really getting my, you know, stand up, you know, my comedy feet back under me. And so when I go out to clubs now, a lot of times um, I'm just testing out stuff. I'm trying stuff. Especially when I do it in Atlanta, when I do it at home, I'm really like if I'm on a show where I'm just going up and doing a guest spot, I'm I never do material that I know works. Okay. Or like when I go to Cats on Tuesday night, I always go out there and just 
throw stuff out there, ideas and setups and premises, and because I'm looking for something that I can put together. So I go out there expecting that, okay, this probably ain't going to go that well. I might not get no laughs. People might look at me crazy, whatever. But I know what I'm doing. I'm trying to find that. I know I'm going to do something that's going to work, but right. I'm not going up there and just doing a set that I know is guaranteed to work because there's no point in that. Okay. You know? And if, I, if I already know it works, then there's no point in me practicing with that. If I'm going right. to work on something, I'm going to work on something that's brand new. Yeah. And take that shot. Because... At this point, nothing bad can happen to me on a stand-up stage that can be worse than anything I've ever been through. I know oh. what it feels like to bomb in front of a room full of people. I know what it feels like to get booed off a stage. You know, I know that that ain't going to happen at this point, but, you know, a quiet room or light laughter, that don't bother me. I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, man, I'm like, everybody's like, my mom is like, why are you getting on the stage? I'm like, why not? Shit, <laughs> I would try it. See if it works, you know? Yeah. So, what is the ultimate goal that you want to um, do in the entertainment industry? It's like, do you want to eventually like write movies and produce movies or you just want to be in them? No, neither one. Um, I have a, I have a different dream than a lot of comedians. I don't, I, I don't have that desire to be, I mean, I'm an older comic and I started when I was, I didn't start comedy until I was on, what, I was over 30 years old when I started. So, okay. So I'm longer in the tooth than most of these dudes are. I didn't start at 19 or 20. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And at one point early in the game, I want I just wanted to be famous. I wanted to know what it felt like to be, you know, I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to be, you know, oh, my God, I want to be in a movie. I want to be, okay, but, you know, wife, uh, five kids, uh, 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 you know, a lot of other things in my life happened since right. that time that changed my perspective on what I want out of this business. Uh, I don't care about being famous. I don't care about being a star. I know a lot of stars. I know a lot of famous people. They can have that. Um, I don't need that. Okay. I do like going on stage. I do like doing shows. Um, I'm not even that interested in being a, 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 you know, a 12 month a year road comic either. You know, I don't want to be in Toledo on a you know Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in in June, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't want to be in 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 Birmingham, you know, Thursday through Sunday in August. Like I I don't want to do those things anymore. One nighters, yeah. Like, for, I'm I'm fortunate to be at a point from the radio show, you know, from being on a, on a nationally syndicated radio show for 15 years now. Um, I'm fortunate that I can go to some cities and do a one night show. Uh, where I where I do a door deal where I, where I pay for the night myself. You know what I mean? I go. I don't have to be booked. I go in. I pay for my advertising. I buy out the room or whatever. And I say, okay, I'm gonna sell my own tickets, do my own show. I go in on Tuesday. I leave out, you know, Thursday morning. You know what I'm saying? Do and one night radio too. Come on now. I know that man. Yeah. So 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 I'm not looking to be that dude that's at an improv or a funny bone every other weekend. That ain't that ain't my thing. Right. But uh, the movie thing, you know, I got a little taste of the L.A. thing. I know what that's about. Not something I'm really interested in. Um, um, I I'm a writer. I'm the head writer for the morning show. Um, I've written for a couple of TV shows. I've written for a couple of comedians. I do like writing. Um, right now, what we're doing is. Uh, you ever you have you, well I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Black Tony from the morning show. Mm -hmm. And uh working on an animated series right now with, oh, nice. with for him. Okay. Uh, uh so that's gonna involve, you know, writing and producing it. Um, you know, I partnered up with a company um that I have a a, a stake in out of out of South Florida. And we got some um we got some very exciting things that we're doing with the whole uh, we had to get some legal stuff taken care of. That's done now. So we got a whole exciting thing we're doing with the Black Tony character, the the the, the as 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 a cart as a as an animated situation, and we're mm -hmm. also going into the world of the metaverse. So okay. we're talking virtual. We're talking about virtual reality comedy shows um, with some very big names in the business. Um, this is all stuff that just came together within the last couple of weeks. So. And you know, I just signed another contract for the mor with the morning show, so I'll be doing, you know, so I'll be doing this for another, you know, theoretically at least for another couple of years. 
So, okay. Yeah, so that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm at. It's not the traditional. Um, Listen, the back, by any means necessary, however you get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've gotten to that point where, you know, when you're younger, you want mm-hmm. to be famous because you want the perks that you think come with the fame. But right. as you get older and a little bit more settled in your life and, and understanding how this all works, uh, mm-hmm. give me the money. <laughs> I don't need to be recognized everywhere I go. You know, I do get recognized, I, but I get this, hey, man, ain't you, uh, uh, what's the name? I'd uh, rather that any day, as long, yeah. as, long as you're so you ain't Yeah, that's my level me. of fame. Like, I don't want to blow up. Like, Michelle, the worst thing that could happen for me right now would be to blow up. Trust me. Mm. I do not want to blow up. Because if I blew up, it'll, yeah, it would be, yeah, I would have to go to some loved ones and say, okay, uh, y'all need to get ready to find out some things because this this is about to get ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, so I don't need to blow up. Blowing up and being being famous in 2022 ain't what ain't ain't what it is, man. You see man. what famous people going through? Yeah. Everything and they going through they going back to your Twitter 30 years ago. You'd be oh, like, man. Yeah, I'm I'm good on that. I'm let me, let me let me I'm a solid D list. I'm 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 so, <laughs> that. I'm so happy with being a solid D list. Well, I'm, shoot, I'm a lot of J list then if that's the case. Uh, man, I'm good. I don't need nobody. Look, I, I could do what I want to do. Ain't nobody like if people right now could tell dirt on me that don't nobody care about. They could call TMZ and show like, mm-hmm. like who? No, we, we no, we don't need that story. Mm-hmm. Listen, I know that's right. Well, if y'all need any more writers, you know, hook, hook your girl up because I can write now. Okay. So, okay. When, when did you Duly feel like noted. Huh? When did you feel like you had your big break though? Like just in in this industry. When did you say, okay, I'm I'm doing something. I'm I'm doing a little something in here. I mean, I don't I, I don't know that I've had a big break. I I guess when I when I started when I started working with some more, that's when I realized I could really do stand up, you know, okay. because we were in front of big crowds. Um, you know, the opportunity was 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 pretty amazing. I didn't have to. I mean, I, I was doing the Chitlin Circuit stuff, too. Now, I wasn't just on the road with her doing big stuff. I was doing the sports bars and the restaurants and the bowling alleys and, the, and the you know, driving from Atlanta to Jackson, Mississippi for one hundred twenty five dollars. I was doing all of that. I mean, I did all that riding the Greyhound bus from. Atlanta to Chicago, Atlanta to Milwaukee, Atlanta to South Bend, Indiana. I did all of that in the course of working, you know, starting out. But the big break was, I don't even, damn, that's a good question. And that's something I ain't never thought about. When when was your big break? I don't know. I I mean, I don't consider myself as having, quote, made it. So I don't know that I've had a big break. Huh? You further than most people. Yeah, I mean, I'm I've I've consistently been able to sustain myself without having to have a, you know, I haven't had a a, a regular job since right. 2005. Well, then you that's know? when you make your big break, then. Well, I guess so. When when I, when when Ricky called me, and I've been knowing him since '97. He was uh, okay. when he used to host a comedy club in Birmingham called the Cobblestone, and mm-hmm. uh, our manager at the time, Denise Howard. You know Denise. Yeah, uh, I do. Denise had. She saw me and she wanted to work with me and she was already working with Ricky and Wanda and Zoo Man and, you know, uh, 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 Tony Tone. She was working with them and she, uh, Rod Man. Uh, and she was like, look, I want to bring you into the Howard agency and, uh, you know, get you out there. And I want to introduce you to Ricky Smiley because he has a comedy club that he hosts in Birmingham. I want you to go, you know, I'm going to take have, book you over there and have you do a weekend. I did a weekend over there with him and another uh, and a headliner. And that's that's when we met, and we kind of became friends. We got we got cool, okay. and so years later, you know, I would see him, of course, as he was blowing up. And years later, we ended up with the same management situation again, mm-hmm. and we ended up going on the road together. And at this point, he had just got the radio show in Dallas, okay. uh, but he had been on the radio in Birmingham already, and then he moved from Birmingham and got the show in Dallas when when Steve Harvey left. And mm-hmm. so we we came together on the road. I did uh, my Walmart bit that he really liked. He really thought it was hilarious. And he was like, man, you are such a good writer. He said, man, I got this new radio show. I really need somebody to come on here to, to just help me come up with some with some funny stuff. Uh, man, why don't you come to Dallas? You know, I fly you to Dallas. Why don't you come to Dallas and just hang out for a week and just kind of get a feel for it? And I had already worked in radio a little bit, you know, okay. so I had some familiarity with, right. the, with the game. And so I said, all right, you know, I ain't doing nothing else. I'll come to Dallas for a week. 
came to Dallas for a week. That week turned into two weeks. Then I left for a week. Then I said, man, man, come back. We, we had started, you know, kind of putting some really funny stuff together. Mm-hmm. And um, that, I don't know, that two, three weeks turned into me staying for a month, turned into me staying for two months, turned into 15 years later, I'm still here. <laughs> and now I'm one of the producers of the show. I'm, uh, the, like I said, the writer for the show and one of the personalities on the show. So it's just that was a major break because that changed my life from the standpoint of, you know, I had a couple of kids at that time. Um, I needed to, you know, I, but I didn't have stability. And th- and that job gave me a foundation. Then that was my first industry job that really gave me a foundation. And benefits. Uh, it's hard to be an industry. Benefits, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I had responsibility now. I was married. I had a couple of kids. And so, that was the that was kind of the break, yeah. And to the point now where you know I have the latitude to to really kind of branch out and do other things based off of having this as as a foundation. And yeah. um, and as far as this goes, man, like like I mean, like seriously, man, we killing it. Um, oh yeah, I, love radio. I used to do radio. Um, a lot of markets. We got a, we got a lot of markets. We got a lot of number one uh, situations. And uh, you know, I'm pretty proud of the work I do. You know, I'm a one man, I'm a one man show when it comes to like most syndicated shows have staffs. Mm-hmm. Ain't got no staff. We got me. <laughs> I the dual checks. I know that's right. Tom, hey, hey, Tom, Tom Jordan had like seven writers. Man, then you got you... right. They got writers. We got me. And um, so yeah, so it's a lot. It's a lot, but it, it's uh, you know. It pays the benefits is, is, is a plus. It's been quite a while since I swiped my debit card and had to look at the screen to make sure it was gonna pop up and say approved. Let's put it that way. Okay, now you know, the hey, no, because you know that oh, hey, you, know, you, you know them days when you put that card in and you gotta look at that bad boy and be like, shit, I hope this shit say approved. Bro, you got your fingers crossed, like I hope this thing go through. Yeah, we yeah, and you can tell when somebody know they ain't got no money on their debit card, when they put that bitch in and they just stand there and kind of look at it for a minute, and they be holding their breath like, oh shit. Yeah. I hope they go through. <laughs> That was why me. I had to pay them thirty five dollar old draft fees. I'm put it that way. But that I was do me. know about them. Oh, trust me, I know about the mobile draft fees. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? Ain't that just unfair that they yes. charge you for being broke? Right, they're gonna charge me for not having enough money. You you knew I didn't have the money when I swiped the card. So come on, bro. <laughs> no, but what's bad is when they compound. Like you ever had like five overdraft fees on one account? Yes, you I paid two hundred and ten dollars just to get back to zero. Jeez, man, try uh, the the, mo- the worst I've been in a position where I had to. I think it was seven hundred dollars worth of debt, and I finally got it in there. <laughs> when I finally Wait, got it, seven hundred and overdrafts. Yes, it was a dollar left when I got finished paying through that. Oh my I, god, well, seven hundred and overdraft. Fee. You know what? I, I would have robbed that bank for that exact amount of money. I would have went in there and said, "Look, I need seven hundred dollars." And then I would have left and came back about an hour later, deposited that shit. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, nigga, didn't you just rob us? Because I'd have forgot to change my shirt. <laughs> like, I got in the way and came back with the same goddamn hoodie on. Like, God damn it. I knew I meant to change. I should have changed my shit. I done had some struggle. I know what the struggle days was about. I ain't about that life Woo! no more. <laughs> Boy, what? What? Struggle? Shit. This is the first. Hey, let me tell you something. I ain't gonna lie. Now I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been okay. I've been okay for for a little minute, but I ain't gonna lie. I just realized as I was driving around the other day. I said, "This is the first time I didn't drove around this long in a car that didn't have no lights on on the dash." You know that what? That let me know I didn't made it. Kinda Listen, sorted. this is the first time I, My look, car I got just... no lights on on the dash. That bitch ain't Man, got no kitchen, low tire pressure, need coolant. Brake fluid like, when ain't no lights on. And it's been some months. I'm like, shit, I'm doing good. You better say that because I, I just got oh, out. Of, I just got another car, and I just got like my old car. It was something was wrong with it. Where it's like you be driving smooth, all of a sudden it feel like somebody kicked your ass down the street, and I'm like, it's still riding no. <laughs> so, Man, I'm telling you, so I done been there. Finally got me a car I can you. pull up and be proud of. <laughs> Woo, I'm telling you, boy. So oh, we are moving on. Oh, I stay at okay. nice hotels now. Uh-oh. That's what I'm saying. I stay at nice hotels now. You know, yeah. no more super yeah. eights, no more red roofs. 
No mm. old Scottish Inn. You ever stayed at a Scottish Inn? I ain't never even heard of a Scottish Inn. Shit, I checked it, man. I went to a $17 a night hotel in South Georgia. Oh, man. $17 a night. You know, when you're at a $17 a night hotel, you can't complain about shit. Yeah, how many dead bodies did you see? You can't tell them for, hey, man, the hot water don't work. You can't, man, you ain't complaining about shit. $17. And that's plus tax. Oh, my God. I done been through some shit. I done been through some shit. Trust me. But anyway, this is your show. Let's go. Where we going? We are moving on. If you were to play the ideal role in any movie, what would it be? Oh, something that involves me making love to a white woman. That would be... Now, wait a minute. If I could be in a movie where I was making love to Jennifer Aniston and one of them other white girls that I fantasize about. Cause see, when I found it, like I'm, I'm not into white chicks, but if I had to do one, I want one. I want her to be like so all the way white that, okay, like, like that would be like if I could play Jennifer Aniston's love interest in a movie, that probably wouldn't go well though. Why? I would catch a case. I wouldn't know how to. I wouldn't know how to just behave. I would. I would be going too much. They'd be like, "Sir, this is not a porn. You that's pull that your drawers off for real under these covers." <laughs> I'm like, get this nigga hey, out of the hey, This nigga got his drawers off for real. Hey, sir, put your dick up. Put it up. Sir. Yeah, yeah. They be, they be like, Kiana, they be like, sir, you, sir, you cannot be naked for real. This is not a porn movie. This is a family film. What the, the script don't call for you being naked under the covers. Y'all are supposed to be in a restaurant right now. I, I fucked that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah I probably don't need to be in a movie. I don't need to be in a movie. Uh, well, I know as in, in, in most careers, everybody don't just focus on their career. You have your fun side, too, especially with you being in radio. So right now, who would you say is your favorite rapper and singer and why? Um, Rapper? My favorite rapper. That's a good question. Now, I'm an old dude. So I don't like these young. I don't like these new rappers. Okay. I do like Cardi B. Okay. I do like Meg. I do like um. I, man, I'm a two chain fan. Okay. I like Titty Boy, man. I like two chain, man. I like rappers that really because I'm a word guy, I'm an English guy, I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. I like dudes that really are heavy on the word play and and the and the storytelling and the alliteration. I like I'm heavy on that. I love Two Chains, man. He always come out with some dope shit. I like um, who else do I like? Damn, that's a good question. I kind of like everybody. I love no, Bruno Mars. He's not a rapper, but he's like my no, favorite I, I artist. Right? Who, who your singer? Bruno was a, a beast right now. Yeah, Bruno. Bruno is. I love his. I love his versatility. I mm -hmm. love his. You know, he he takes chances. I I, I like Bruno. I'm, I'm, I dig Bruno. My, my, you know, my longtime favorite is probably Usher. I'm a okay. big Usher guy. Um, yeah, yeah, that's oh. that, yeah. Now, do you do you do you mess with um Anderson Pack? I only knew about Anderson Pack through uh Silk Sonic when 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 they what? did Lead the Open. That's that was my introduction to Anderson Pack. I had seen mm -hmm. his name, but I had yeah. no idea like that he was dope like that. And mm -hmm. then when, when Silk Sonic came out, that's when I went and checked some of his catalog. I'm like, oh, okay, this dude. Right? Yeah, he was. I knew about him too. Well, I, I knew about him from um, Never Let. I don't know the name of the song, but people like you can never let it down or something like that. And he got a song with um, Buster Rhymes that's pretty dope that put me on to him. I was like, okay, I see it. Yeah, oh, and, right. Anderson's a dope. Anderson's a dope dude. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, that's right. what I like. Now, I always um, ask people that have been doing it for a long time, I know you're an entrepreneur yourself, but what are some words of wisdom that you would give any entrepreneur that's in the industry, or in the entertainment industry, trying to come up? Okay, you said in the entertainment industry? Mm-hmm. Or any industry? It can be any in industry, but I specifically entertainment, but it can be any industry. I would say get advice from people who know what they're talking about. Listen to people that have done what the had listen to people that have done the thing that you're trying to do. 
And don't you okay. just focus in on only, like if you have a dream, focus on your dream, but don't let the love of your dream deter you from doing what you got to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. don't be so in love with doing the thing that you want to do that you uh, take away the possibility of doing the things that you need to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you still got to eat. While, while, while you working on your dream, you still got to eat. You still got to keep lights on. You still got to have a car to drive. You still got to put clothes on your back. So um, I was talking to a young person the other day who is uh, trying to make it in the, in, the, in the music industry. And I was telling mm -hmm. uh, this person, I was saying, look, you know, but in the meantime, in between time, while you and you work in a regular job right now, but you're also still trying to get in the studio. and do stuff. I said, develop another skill, like, you know, learn how to braid hair, do bartending, anything that gives you flexibility, but that at the same time, you have the ability to make money every day so that you can finance your dream. You know what I'm saying? Because every dream still requires some degree of finance and you still have to live. So my, my, my thing would be talk to people who know what they're doing. Talk to people who know um, the best advice I've ever gotten about the business has been from people who have been successful in the business, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, the, uh, one of the, co uh, a company that, um, uh, that I'm in, that I'm, uh, uh, have ownership in right now. That's what we do. That's actually what, what a big part of what we do called real biz game. And mm. what we do is we provide strategies, hacks, and 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 guidance for people who want to be in business, regardless of what kind of business it is, um, to to teach you how to how to be in business, how to set your business up, how to grow your business, how to, um, you know, learn things about you know tax strategies, business credit, things like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's a, a company a friend of mine started, very good friend of mine started. He's he's very uh, successful in, in launching and, and running different type of businesses. And um, yeah, so so that's, that's my thing. Is there any way they can get in touch with the people to, to get a part of that? Yeah, you, 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 you can follow us, man. Uh, go to the, the website is uh, therealbizgame.com therealbizgame.com and the Instagram page is at realbizgame. And uh it's a subscription-based uh, service, um, and you know, once you go on the site and see, you know, how we do what we do. Uh, I mean, we're doing a we doing like a five thousand dollar giveaway this month for the first month subscribers. Um, it's, it's it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. But yeah, don't waste a lot of time listening to people. You don't want to learn about how to become a millionaire from somebody that's got three hundred dollars in the bank. Hello, you better say that. That's why I tell everybody, your 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 job will fund your dreams. Like, don't quit your job looking for the dream. Nah, you got to right, get that money right, to get right. the dream. Yeah, them them days, them days of you know, oh, I'm gonna go to Los Angeles with fifty dollars on a dream. That's yeah, that's stupid right now because your ass exactly. is gonna, you're gonna be starving and 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 doing some things to try to try to survive. So that's not that's not a good strategy to have, especially in LA. Oh my. What we got? <laughs> Now, name name one entrepreneur you look up to and why. Um, one entrepreneur I look up to and why. I would say my business partner, but I don't want to be too self serving. I'll say uh, Rick Ross. I like the way he, um, I like the way he moves. You know, people can say what they want to say about you know his 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 come up and how he. I like I like I just like the way he that he's he's diverse in how he gets his money. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's like you know real estate and, and and franchises and like I just him and, and uh yeah yeah I, I like the way Ross is moving. I like the way Ross is moving. That's right. He's looking at my wings all the time. <laughs> we are moving on to yes, the fun segments. So right first up, we got Kiss or Diff. Now, this is Celebrity Crushes. You just decide who you kiss and who you diff. 
All okay. right. We got Holly Berry or Carrie Hilson. Who you kissing? Who you dissing? Kissing Holly Berry, dissing. Ugh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, kissing Holly Berry just for the nostalgia because I've lusted over her for so you know I lusted over her so many years. Um, and plus she got that age on us. There's something about a woman in her fifties that mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, a lot of dudes be sleeping on. They they have no idea that when a woman hits that 48, 49, 50 mark, oh man, things change and 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 things change for the better. I don't care. Hey, you give me a 50-year-old Halle Berry over a 22-year-old young Miami any day of the week. Any day. Any day. I know. All right. Taraji P. Henson or Issa Rae? Who you kissing? Who you dissing? Taraji. Okay. Taraji. All day. Um, Issa, ah, she just don't do it for me. She just, uh, she, she, she's an attractive lady, but she just don't do it for me. Like I, I just get nothing off, you know, from her. Taraji, I've had a crush on her forever. She's, I like, I can't, I, I kind of like hood. I kind of like hood. I like chicks that got some hood edge to them. Okay. And um, I find myself attracted to that. And uh, Taraji seems like, and we we actually had her in studio before, and I told her this to her face. I said, you know what? I said I like. I said I've been low key in love with you for a long time. I said, and the part of the reason is I really feel like I could get you. <laughs> I said if I, I said if I wasn't married, I really feel like I got a shot. You know what I'm saying? Okay. She was like, well, okay, then. you know, like, little boy. She was like, okay, then, Mister Confidence. I said, I, I said I ain't bullshit. I, I said I feel like as a regular dude, I feel like I could get you. And okay. she didn't like say, oh no, no. Cause I think deep down she know it's true. She okay. Machine. She Hollywood machine. Hollywood. She regular. She's like I'm. Yeah. I, I, I got a bag, but I'm. But I'm still regular. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Last yeah. but not least, Tracy Chapman or Whoopi Goldberg. Who you kissing? Who you dissing? Um. Ooh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Tracy. Uh. See, and now look, see, look, okay, see, this this could be real dangerous. I'm not trying to come mm -hmm. off as a okay, Tracy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh huh. Uh, Tracy Chapman. I mean, is, is the life of one of my kids on the line for me to do this? No. <laughs> do I have to make this choice to save one of my kids? It's sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I would have to go with Tracy Chapman because Whoopi Goldberg, no, just no, uh uh. No. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just can't get Celia out of my mind. I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I, I can't get she didn't see right by her. Even when I watch the view, I still see Celia. I can't. I can't. All right. Can't. No, we I'm move good. on. We move on to DAQ. That is dumbass questions. That is random fun questions. I want answers to. If you could make a law for one day that everyone in the world had to abide by, what would it be? Um. That law would be, uh, damn, just one. Yep, just one. That you get to hit anybody in public that's doing something that annoys you. You get one. You get you 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 get one. You you get to put you get one lick, free. You get one free lick. Like if I'm behind you in line at Subway and you taking too damn long to order. I get to punch you in the back of your head and you can't do shit about it. You can't call the police. Like it, you look, you had all this time in the world to think about the fuck you were gonna order. And you right. went up there for or you in line at the bank and you doing too much at the counter and you just up there like I could just walk up and just knock your ass out and it's free. Like you get it's almost like a low key purge. You know how to get so you, hours yeah, you get the national flat they did. Yeah, and it, it, yeah, it'd be international slap shit out you day. Like I, I can slap shit. You can slap shit out of anybody that's bothering you, and they can't retaliate because they was doing something stupid. So yeah, I'm here that'll for be, it. I'm here. For it. it leads me to my next question. If you can back slap somebody in your past with no consequences, who would it be? <laughs> oh, back slap. Oh. You know what's crazy? Mm -hmm. I don't really have nobody in my past at all. Like, 
Really? Okay. No, I don't because I don't carry grudges. I don't. I don't. I really don't carry grudges. I just. I can't name a person in the world that I hate. Other than Trump. not from like um, high school elementary. Nah, I. I. I don't. I don't have beef. I don't. I don't beef with people. So there's nobody I really want to slap shit out of. Uh. Yeah. That's a first. All right. Nobody I want to slap. How about that? Not from my past. What's the worst name you could give a barbershop? What's what? What's the worst name you could give a barbershop? Um, mm. Bumpy neck. <laughs> okay. Cause when they when they when they line you when they edge you up within thirty clippers and, and you get them bumps mm -hmm. on the back of your neck, ah, shit, fuck your whole you be fucked up for a whole month. Oh, the okay. bumpy neck, the bumpy neck, dirty clipper barbershop. Yeah, dirty clippers. Mm -hmm. All right. Name three items you would purchase to make a cashier feel uncomfortable. Three items: uh, butt grease. What they call that? Anal lube. Uh, what they call that stuff? What they call that? <laughs> KY jelly. KY jelly. Yeah, booty grease. Um, I call it booty grease. Yeah, y'all got some of that booty grease. Um, yeah, KY jelly. Okay. And if you purchase it along with a cucumber and <laughs> and some <laughs> and some neosporin. Cause oh that just let that's just letting the, that's that's letting the, the the cashier know that it's it's about to be some unholy shit going on. Some with shit this pop off. <laughs> yes, it's some shit finna pop off, and it's gonna be some. Yeah, I'm gonna walk yeah. in the store. Yeah, I'm gonna walk in the store today. I'm gonna ask for butt grease. I'm just. Gonna... <laughs> yeah, I couldn't think of the name of it. KY Jelly. Yeah, the, the, the yeah the booty grease. You know, y'all know. I like butt grease better. That's the, that's like, the one. Ma'am, 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 where where's the? I'm, I'm gonna do that today just to be an ass. I'm gonna go in a random Walgreens. Excuse me. What yeah. the hell is the butt grease on? You know when you when you about yeah the butt grease when you about to you know. Yeah, and record it, please record it. <laughs> <laughs> if I did right. live in Atlanta, I probably would. But because I live in Atlanta, uh, no, nah, that could lead to some very uh man. Listen, promise to stop. <laughs> oh. Y'all heard about Phil okay. Kelly was in there buying booty grease. I told y'all about that dude. Oh God, that'll go viral. Show no. Yeah, oh, I don't need that in my life. Nah, I'm good. We are moving on to GMG. That's that. But what grinds your gangster? What is one of your pet peeves? I don't like when they. I don't like when they hold my money up when I'm paying for something. Like I don't hardly use cash, but when I do yeah. use cash, I don't like when they do that whole little number right there. For some reason, <laughs> I take that shit personal. <laughs> Be like, bitch, do I look like? Do I look like I'm gonna give you a fake five dollar bill, ho? Really? Right. I just gave you a five, bitch. You holding a five dollar bill up? God damn! They don't even make counterfeit fives. You be in the hood, family dollar or something. It's gonna hold up a five dollar bill, like really? Oh I thought a twenty dollar and fifty dollar was the only one y'all did that shit with. You gonna hold up a five? I don't like them holding they up my money. everything now. That grind my gear. Don't hold up my money. You look at me. You can tell I'm prosperous. Yeah, HBCU, you, you damn right. You prosperous. Don't hold up my money. Just take the shit and trust me. All right. We are moving on to the fan favorite, which is opera that thing out. So what this is, you are going to sing a song that you know you're the, like a whole verse to, whether it be a rap song, R&B song, theme song, whatever you know, at least one full verse to, but you got to sing in your best opera voice. Um... I'll take one that's been uh that's been in the news a lot lately. Uh oh. Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. Can we talk for a minute? Girl, I want to know your name. How about that? It's the hand for me. <laughs> can we talk? Can we talk? That's it. I don't know. Last but not least, we got our game Sing and Do. 
Sing and Do is a family friendly game that all can play, created by me and my homeboy DJ Oster. So, what you're doing, you're singing the melody of the song, but you can only use the word do. And you got 60 seconds to guess what I'm singing. So, I'm going to do a couple of songs. I'm going to let you guess, and I'm going to let you do a couple of songs. Let me see here. I'm going to do hip hop and RB because normally my lane. All right, you ready? Mm. Do 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 Pony. There we go. All right. All right. This is the old school. Uh do 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 You can have a piece of my love. That is all right. Last one. Uh-huh. Do 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 Oh, All right. Hold on, I gotta put my real glasses on for this. Shit. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, I can see now. You ready? Can't damn see that. Well, let me know where I need to move it. You gotta push it up. Come up closer. Up here. Yeah, come up closer. Okay. Huh? I gotta pick one of those songs. Yeah, just pick one. Let me know what. And once you pick a song, just let me know, and I'll put it down, and I'll guess. Um. The white people song. Okay, we can do another. We can do another one if you, you know, don't know those. Black songs. I'm from Decatur. Hell. Okay. Okay. You got it. Uh, let me push. Hold it down. Something. To see what's at the top. Okay. 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 <clears throat> um. Da da do 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 uh something about Bobby Brown. Yeah. Uh, don't don't be cruel. My prerogative. Okay, I knew it was real. I was close. All right, ready? All right, let's try one more. Uh, come on, close. Come on, close. Come on, close. Uh, over some, over some, over some. Uh, other way, other way, other way, other way. Uh, come on down. No, live, come up some. No, 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 no. The other way. Okay, all right. Do 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 I got one more. I got one what? more, but I already got it off the first. I got I got the last one off the first card you held up. Ready? All right. Oh, you you gonna do? You got it already? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Do 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 Lord. in such a crazy way. I should know that. I got a whole parody about it. So. <laughs> Whatever it is that you do. Okay, you come on, buddy, wrong. Hey, you know what? That's a man law violation for a man to sing that song in the car when ain't no other. When you can't, yeah, you can only sing that song when you're completely by yourself. If, if anybody is with you, you can with it too. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, that that's one of them songs that'll get you there. Like when I'm in the car by myself. I turn into a whole, I'd be like half a sister. If we come on, I turn in like, I don't know what it is that you done to me. And it's got okay. me act such a crazy way. Whatever <laughs> it is that you do when you do what you do when. All it's right. a feeling I don't understand. Come on. Cause my heart, with my heart is a deep time with the. I be a whole half a sister in that damn car. Yes, I got I a whole parody on that. If you watch my YouTube, I got a whole uh, parody called "Your Breath Makes Me Weak." So I know that's all from beginning to end. 
<laughs> I can't play that song. I can't play that song with my windows down riding through Midtown. I be done pull somebody. Oh my god! Well, that is how you play Stinky Do for all that's interested. <laughs> you can get it at stinkadoo.com. And special K, thank you so much for coming in, tapping in, joining us. Let them know how they can find you. And again, tell them about your realbiz.com so they can know how to get on with that. Yeah, man. Let me um, yeah. Let me tell y'all something, man. This company is uh, we we about to do some tremendously huge things in helping people get their get their business life together. Everything from from you know business setups to LLC setups to incorporation uh, credit repair. Um, um, we we have professionals that we reached out to that are lending their expertise that you can get one on one sessions with. Uh, real biz game on Instagram. It's that real biz game on Instagram, and you can go to the Instagram. You can hit the link for the website, which is the real biz And um, check us out, man. Like I said, uh, we, we we're starting to take subscribers. You can subscribe to the service for one dollar for the entire month of January. One dollar, and for that one dollar subscription, you had you have a shot to win five thousand dollars. In cold hard U.S. currency, five thousand dollars for a one dollar subscription. You can't. I mean, where else are you gonna get a five thousand dollar return on your money? So yeah, real biz game at the real biz game. Um, and it's uh yeah, just check us out. But you know, you can go to my personal uh page, Special K nine one three on Instagram, uh my Facebook page, um. Uh, K Douglas Comedy on Facebook, and I also have Special K Nine One Three on Facebook. So yeah, so holla at your right, boy, man. Right. Um, I don't know what else. Um, you can also go to Black Tony Comedy at Black Tony Comedy on Instagram, and okay. uh, Black Tony okay. Comedy on Facebook, and follow my uh, my protege. Let's just say we're very close. Um, yeah, so follow that as well. Uh. Was there any other questions you had? No, and, and you could just you know follow Michelle C and Candy Kisses TV as I'm gonna be about to be his new protege. He don't even know it yet, but um, <laughs> just just go ahead and segue me in there, you know, because I ain't playing by the writing game. I will be writing. <laughs> hey man, I'm telling you, I, I'm I'm telling you, it's it's uh, man, 20 years ago, Michelle, 20 years ago, and well, we're 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 we're. We're four days into 2022, but in August of 20, August of 2001, <clears throat> I was getting out of prison from uh, doing uh, almost two years in federal prison. And uh, I had nothing. When I got out, I still had a house to come home to because my wife held it down. I still had a house to come home to, but then, you know, Soon, not not long after that, we we ended up having to do a short sale on the house because I just, you know, I was working. I had a, I had a job working at Kroger, on the overnight shift for like I think I was making eight eight twenty five or nine dollars an hour. I had a my mom gave me her old car. It was a ninety one Geo Storm with 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 uh, one of the side mirrors missing and a bad <laughs> transmission. And uh, I had three kids, another one on the way. And uh, I was working at, like I said, I was working at Kroger. I got fired from there. Then I was working at a at a, a for ADT selling alarm systems door to door, and uh, borrowing money left and right. Man, I mean, it was just it was it was a bad. It was it was it was not good. And that but year, God. finishing out two thousand one, going into two thousand two, you know, got my comedy game back going. You know, did Comic View. Um, and things just really just, you know, and there was some more tough times, you know, between then and 2005, I was working in landscaping with my wife's cousin. I was on the back of a landscaping truck, truck and I was throwing out hay and setting flower beds and blowing grass and all that kind of stuff for mm -hmm. almost a whole year. And uh, then the radio thing popped and here we are. So uh, that road ain't never easy. People, it's easy, but it's always worth it. It's yeah, y'all look, y'all look, y'all. When y'all look at somebody that's up, y'all be like, "Oh man, well, you know, no, nah, that road ain't never easy." 
and you ain't lying. I've been through some things. We done all seen some some really tough, you know, tough situations. And but we but you know, but we 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 been we done made it through, man. And I'm and I'm proud to say that at, at this point in my life, 56 years old, man, I'm just, you know, I got no complaints. You I can't, no you complaints. still can body roll. Say- not many people that 56 that can still body roll. Like that. <laughs> Oh, I still, I, oh, I, hey, I still got some left now. I still, hey, look. Okay, I, 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 okay. I, hey, Michelle, let me tell you something. I still got one G string. You know what? Way in the back of my closet. And I say, if it, if, if, if this is radio shit, if the bottom fall out, let me tell you something. I'm still a dime piece to them women that's like 70 and up. So, listen, that clear my lounge, you always tired. Clear my lounge is always hard. I got to go start stripping at the VFW. At the Elks Lodge or one of these uh, senior citizen ho- senior citizen apartment complex. Listen, I you better get, get it done. <laughs> I can get some of that money now. I still got a little bit left in the tank. I don't I got know. that one G string. Got a little elephant face on it. <laughs> okay. As long as I got that G string and a little bit of toilet tissue, I can make that thing. All right. Don't try. I, me. I'm so sick of you. <laughs> Well, that has been another episode of Candy Kisses TV. Make sure you tune in every Monday, Thursday, every other Friday, and we will see you next time. Candy Kisses TV is sponsored by Singadoo. Did you do it today? Singadoo. Singadoo. Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you do it like this? Can you do it real quick? Go get it. Go get it. Pick a card. with some class but make it real fast this time is kind of tricky can you do it in 60 get your copy today at singadoo.com